правила объекта Word. You drafted it, so I assume you have reasons for doing what you did. But my question was, I was like on paragraph five, the 20 year period, did you have a particular reason for 20 years? We based it off of the regular fire station agreement. I basically took that that okay. agreement and just kind of moved things around and deleted and added stuff into it. Okay, and then the renewal for 20 years, I, I mean, some renew year to year afterwards. And I know some people have 99 year leases. I'm just, I'm just, just asking questions. I'm not being critical or saying it's wrong. I'm just asking, is 20 years a magic number for something? I don't know why the, the original agreement with the building out there was 20 years. I don't have any idea. So, I mean, that's the only thing I would throw out to you all. Do you want to lock it in for longer? <clears throat> Do you want a year to year after 20 to give you some latitude? Um, in other words, you can lock it in for another 20. I would sure. say if the first 20 was good, the second 20 should be good. I don't like the beginning. They just drop There's an error. Year year There's an error in there. Look at what's fine. It's, it's, um, period of 10, spell T E N, oh. Oh. and then parentheses 20. Oh. <clears throat> It's up to you guys. I'm just Who knows that 20 years what you're going to be thinking? I'd probably go year to year just to not tie somebody else into something that they don't want to do. I mean, okay. Well, like you said, we don't you don't know where you're going on in 20 years. Right. That's fine with me. After 20 years to go year to year. Yeah. And they can, they can turn around in 20 years and sign another 20 if they want to. So okay. at the end of said time, each party saw the option to renew the agreement on a yearly basis? Yeah. Yeah. Yearly annual. And then the next paragraph six talks uh, terminating on a year notice. You want to do a year notice, thirty days notice. Okay. Yeah, I just, I mean, I don't really see that it's probably ever going to go anywhere. Okay. I mean, that's fine by me. Twenty years, and then do a year to year after that. That's okay. And then at that point, if they wanted to. that if there's no notice given, it just kind of keeps going. You know, I can see where the city, you know, kind of protects the city, you know, if they're putting any money into it for the first 20 years. But, I mean, after 20 years, if you just don't do anything, it just right. keeps continuing. Right. Kind of square oh, so, sorry, so unless the city at 20 years is wanting to put up a building or something like that, sorry they're going more that. protection for And I can see if you're going to spend some money on it. thinking you want to put something in there, I mean, it's a storage container. Are these things going to be attached to the ground? Are they going to be like 
Cool. Well, Xboxes that the county can pick up at the end of 20 years and haul off. Yeah, well, they're going to be, they won't be permanently attached. I mean, we'll anchor them to the ground, and but they'll be bolted or welded together as well. Yeah, you can make more houses. Type so, of you, do you want to put anything in that says at the termination that the county can pick up their storage containers? I'd hate to put too much stipulation on there as far as if they want to try to build a structure out of three or four complexes together and weld them together and put like external stairs on them. I would hate to put too many stipulations if it has to be, you know, to where the county can come in. It's not that much money, and I'm sure at that point we could figure something out. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, do you have anything else you're wanting? Um, as far as parts for the five ton trucks, um, I got a quote here from Kansas Forestry Service. Um, the truck in Stafford needs, I think, four brake pots for it. Um, they are military stuff only, as long as I can really get them. Uh, we'd like to have actually buy eight of them because there's two different types for each truck for the park brake system and the actual working brake system. Uh, and then batteries. We had two batteries, I'd like to buy six, so we had four on hand. Um, the total for everything is $1,844.80. That would be for eight brake chambers and six batteries. Basically, the other stuff, Vince, how we have five of them trucks would just be parts on hand because it is a common failure part. We'd have them on hand if we need to not have to wait or make a trip to make that. Batteries are just spares. I mean, we need them, right? We need two. We need two of the six. The other four would be on hand. Uh, the batteries run 78, 38 a piece. Uh, one of the brake chambers is. 178 and the other is 164.75 each. There's the first I got for everything. Are those basically the same? I mean, I know they semi air brakes bolt up onto them, but I mean, are they basically the same style of pots? Well, they're, I mean, it's the same concept, they're just different style. Mm -hmm. And this is from the forestry service margin. Yeah. So you, you have your spring loaded pots and then you just have your pots that are just actually right. yeah. 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 It is, I take four. Go to your truck loaded batteries. Well, yeah, but, uh, you know, the thing is, <laughs> the, uh, we had one truck in the St. John station and, and it's got gel cell batteries and it. it cost us $1,000 to replace it for. It was one of the deals, the truck wouldn't start, we couldn't give take charge, and so we just went over and got four new ones and put them in. If we'd had four on hand, it would have been less than $400 to replace them. Yeah. So I think it's smart to have four of them sitting here if yeah. we need them. You know, Devin, somebody should have just ran them to Manhattan and picked them up if they had them on hand right then. Because yeah. I mean, that would have saved us quite a bit of money, probably $600. <coughs> I would move that we allow Marshall to purchase the parts, brake chambers, and batteries from Kansas Forest Service for 1844 and 86. Second. I have a motion and a second to allow Marshall to purchase <coughs> parts and batteries from Kansas Forest Service for $1844.86. All in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Did we do this today? I would think we should. Should? You want us to go ahead and pat that? Yeah. You're fairly sure. confident that the city's going to? Yeah. Today's date? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I would move we approve the training facility cooperative agreement between the city and the county. Second. So a motion on the uh, Second, to approve the training facility agreement with the City of St. John's 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Go ahead and sign it. If you want to get, I can get it to her. It you want to do. I'll get it to her. That way they can get a copy of it. And I think that's all I have for you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Have fun on your trip. Yeah. Right, Is your arm supposed to be down like that, young lady? Yeah, I, I have to. Huh? I'm getting yeah. periodically. Okay. Like the circulation. Okay. We just we just don't want any issues here. <laughs> what? You're biasing my time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kansas Department May contacted me a couple weeks ago. And they are, I'm sure it's probably partially reflective of new people in, in staff positions and so forth, but they're going through and doing research regarding counties that block corporate dairy and swine development. So well, we've kind of been through this before. Um, you know, they wanted to make sure that it was in, in effect, and you know, it is. So I, for, for what it's worth, you know, it's one of those things I've stopped a few times too since we got the last look at this to just kind of remember where it stands. So in 1994, the commission um, passed a resolution um, specifically allowing hog and dairy farming within Stafford County, corporate hog and dairy farming within Stafford County. So that was in 1994. And then in um, 1996, specific discussions about the possibility of court production facilities near the Stafford Park County Line in 1995. And then um, we, had, we had people of, uh, approaching the commission in favor of it. The commission did a, what they called a straw poll. It sounds like it was unofficial straw poll.
it turns out now there's one that's looking from New Mexico, and they specifically brought him through this part of the state. Um, he'll be back again in a couple of weeks. So they're in transparency telling him that this one's um, you know, currently the restriction is in place, but it sounds like this kind of maybe five, six county region is something that otherwise would fit their, their you know, what they're looking for. So we have the opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to meet him. I would invite one or more of you to participate in that meeting if you like. I don't have a date yet, but I expect it to be toward the end of March. But they've told me it's, you know, it's someone that's looking to have a operation with about 30 employees. They have two boys that are currently at Cornell University looking to come back. They've got some younger kids, so they want to locate that somewhere that's within 10 to 15 miles of the school where the kids will go. Um, they phase it in over time to include heifer development. This um, is a dairy. The dairy, there is the EFA dairy delivery to the panhandle of Texas. So, I, mean, I wouldn't mind us start looking, uh, put out feeders to allow the dairy and pig confinement in Stafford County. You know, we do have zoning in place now as far as if you put an olive floor, it's got to be so many miles from somebody's house. So, I mean, I do feel like neighbors are protected and if you're going to put in a facility like Chris Benson when he put in his cattle operation. He had to send letters out if any one of those people would have complained. And so, I mean, people, it's not like they're going to move it across the street from you. But the majority of the tax, or the majority of the property taxes comes into the county as either from agriculture or oil. If we could get a dairy in here, a slide operation in here, it uses our grain as another source of cheap fertilizer and brings more property taxes into our county and jobs. So I don't know how, I don't want to just bring it up one day and vote on it. Do we need to start putting in the minutes of our meetings that we're discussing it? And so that if somebody comes in, they can, they can say, well, I didn't know this was going on. I mean, what is the process of this? Yeah, you know, be good. you can maybe have talk with Farm Bureau or something like that too about doing some kind of listening type meeting. I mean, if we talk to him, he's really interested. We're trying to give them a public meeting. Well, and here's the thing: we can all think it's a great idea, but if there's not a landowner that's willing to sell land, it's a dead deal the other way, you know. So it's not like we can just decide this. So, you know, they need, they're wanting around a section's worth of land. They don't need that much. They told me specifically for the dairy, but they would like to have that for the benefit of buffer around the dairy and so forth. So, um, you know, I've told them my, you know, non, I don't know, I mean, just my kind of personal assessment of it is that if we were to locate in Stafford County, the best area would probably be up in the sewer grading area because it's got the most separation from and the higher water table. So I think this, for what I know of, is the soils would be better for lagoons and so forth in that part of the county than it would be in like others. But house. That's fine. As long as it's selling cheap fertilizer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's hard to believe, but I mean, I think I'm four miles from Golden Hill, four or five miles. And if I get an east wind, oh, yeah. you smell it just like this. Oh, yeah. But it smells like it's it's me. <laughs> but. Uh, oh, yeah. They might have a better, it's going to be hard for them to come into a family farm and buy ground like that. But up in our area, uh, a lot of the majority of the landowners have bought ground in the last 10 years is ILS and Farmer Schmidt. And from what I've heard, anything ILS has is for sale if you would offer them enough money. And Farmer Schmidt's an old guy that just buys it. So. I would say they would have a better possibility of buying ground up there than anywhere because they have no emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. so. Sounds like something we ought to explore. 
and courage to come in and hear talk. Mm -hmm. But I do think you need to treat the public yeah. carefully in the fact that if they meet with us and we're interested, and that you ought to be willing to talk to have a public meeting to answer any questions. But do we need to make sure that in the minutes of our meeting that we're discussing this oh, where people so. are ready to find and start yeah. coming in? Because that one operation, the Cimarron's still in operation, isn't it? Nor the Cimarron. There's one at either Ulysses or, yeah. or Hugoton. Right. And there's one up by Scott City. Right. Because I, I see no trucks come up and down 50, well, particularly in the evening. It came up in the conversation that the More than two. processing plant, or isn't there a trucks. processing plant at Garden City? Yes. And it's full. So they yeah. can't currently deliver to Garden City, even though that might sound logical. They're going to have to go online to the handhandle of Texas until we develop more dairy processing capacity in Kansas. How many acres that take? I don't know. We've got 160 acres of them. <laughs> hey, no, if we had a board that's <laughs> like we had transportation, it might um, move it to where as the far, As far as processing are. milk, is that what you were talking about? Mm-hmm. Maybe the cheese or whatever. Yeah. It should be. Or for, I don't know, maybe it's fluid milk. I think the one in, in the garden is cheese. I'm not sure. Yes. <laughs> Did Seaboard actually ever, has that changed? I mean, well, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't locate. Anything, no, you know, they, they were talking about putting a process and they or a processing plant in, in a great bend, and then they didn't. It just never, never came of that or didn't change to anything else. Or, no, okay. I mean, I think yeah. basically everybody rejected them yeah. in the area. <laughs> I think great bend rejected them from I'm, a, I, I, People down in Guyman are glad they came to Guyman. I've always told them when I first went down there, I went down, purposely went downtown, and there were storefronts vacant. And I think I called in the area for three or four years, and when I left, I went downtown to Kansas, and there was one vacant store front in that town. Of course, if you get outside of town and get driving by those lagoons when it's 110 degrees. <clears throat> You held your breath and drove real fast. Yep. Well, but they did you know. bring Conley to that area. Yep. And I do think that in the last 10 years they've come, come a long ways to, uh, as far as getting helping with the smell out of the oh, yeah. and different chemicals and aeration and stuff like that. I mean, I never smell it when I go by you guys' this facility out there. Yeah, they're experimenting with different microbial treatments too that basically are a natural, I don't know, biodegrade the stuff naturally within the food. There's less of it to compost. Um, so, I don't know. It's, like you said, I think there's progress in how they're managed. We're definitely keep an open mind to it. So I guess I'll, I mean, I've agreed to meeting with them when I know more about what that schedule is. I guess I'll let you know if you'd like to participate a little bit more and more. I'd like to meet you. Yeah, would you? Okay. In the minutes I put it was a contempt to the board to explore the possibility of lifting the ban on various farm development. More than that in there. That would get Well, I mean, you need it. Yeah. And I put zoning regulations are now in place, which are not there 20 plus years ago. So, okay. And probably more regulations up here. And we probably ought to bring car over and try to get it to come in, or week after that, to have him kind of look into it and see if the zoning is in place. That addresses that or not, do you? I think it does. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go home or to the office. Go to the office. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep it down. Yeah. Okay, we've got minutes, we've got... Uh,
Second. I'll make a motion we approve the minutes of February 27th. Second. Uh, motion and second to bring the minutes from the 22nd. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, a couple of tax roll corrections. LPN one and Shannon um, changed some things in it. Basically, the duties mirrored the LPN. We did. Looks like she's good all the bases. Added a few things, um, took a few out. Just we tweaked it a little bit, but I did not realize we didn't have. There's nothing in here about um, twisting Todd's arm to get vaccinated. Well, we, that's, that's I am on the list. That's just implied. <laughs> I've told her she when, I'm, when my time comes up, she's got to hide behind the door when I walk in and stab her back. <laughs> <laughs> you said she had injections. There we go. Like the cattle. I don't know why getting shots for expensive. Well, I think I know the reason why. It was when Brenda was a nurse, when she was training for nursing, she used you as, as, a, no, as a big I've patient. never liked your shots. <laughs> it's just the thought of that needle going in. I can't even watch a shot on TV. I can't either on that way, too. Told me that one time. I know you're squeamish about shots. So, so we need, need to make, to make a motion to adopt the um, job descriptions. Of the no, not really. I just need. I just want to make sure you guys yeah. are aware that we did it. It's good to maintain okay. it. Oh, yeah. Just right when we all So is the hospital uh, coming to the I haven't heard that they're not. So I guess they are. Uh, I do have something to talk about a little bit. Uh, with, with the uh, RIC Commission, where they were, you know, they are a taxing entity, but the money went 
through the school or they text that. I mean, is what the correct commission gets, I think they're getting two or three mils now, it really doesn't matter. But is that just a set fee? Or can they raise and lower it as they want? They have, when they establish their rec commission, they they usually have a cap on their mills. Um, like I think Maxwell's is one mill. St. John's is three. They raised their four. They were pretty high. So, like, if St. John decided to raise their mill or it would something, it have to go to a vote. Okay. Uh, so, it, the commissioners can't just say no. That. You have no control of that. Okay. It, no, but it so would go to a vote. Of same way as the folks in the rec district. Yeah. So, so, since they do get taxing money, the schools and like the rec commissions, can the county? Say we want to see an audit. Whose responsibility was it to make sure that they were getting audits done, or was it the school? It's business? not you. I mean, they're an outside entity. You guys, they do their own budgeting. They, I mean, it's really the board. Their board. Yeah. So it's their board. The I school mean, can't even force them. Well, the see, there was a statute in place that said if you didn't get over 150000 in tax dollars, right. you didn't have to be audited. And now yes. that statute has changed to like 500000 or something. Yeah, it's more than double. They've raised it. Yeah. So technically, if They're not your rec commission, like I don't think Maxwell's rec commission gets. Probably, no. So they say. probably don't have to be audited by statute. Yeah. Now, if it was me sitting on a board and it was tax dollars, yes, it would be audited. But if you were sitting on this in the Maxwell School Board, you couldn't tell the rec commission yeah, because they're their own entity? Well, see, it, 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 it's an entity inside the school. So I would think the school could have said, we want to see the audit. I think the city could have also. That's what I didn't understand. Their, their bylaws they stated then. Is the city in Maxwell? The, the uh, school? <laughs> Um, appointed to board members. Board members. The city of St. John appointed two board members, and then the board members between themselves did one at large to add to them. So I believe I would think anybody that was appointed people on the board could require an audit. I think yeah. so. So is there any way that we can look down the road or discuss the township boards, townships? Being audited? Yeah. And I mean, I'm afraid half your treasurer is going to quit. They're their own entities. So we really can't have to say so. I don't think you want to go there. Yeah. I mean, we get their annual reports uh, as, a, as a citizen of Douglas Township. You're certainly welcome to go to the board meetings ask to look at the financials whenever you want to. So. But again, since they're not statutorily obligated to audit, you can't afford it. That is my question. So now when people jump in the yeah. And unless their budget is over three hundred thousand dollars, I think it might even be more. I need to look at that. They changed that statute. Did they? Yeah, I was told that by, was by the accountants. But they raised to something. I'm not sure. What that's what I thought. Yeah, you said. Switch you. Apologize. This was a May. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I had to do an ER run with my son today. So, uh, what was that? Yeah, he, uh, he's never been to the ER before, but he woke up and he woke up and he's saying he couldn't breathe and he was having strider and everything. And, uh, pretty bad. I, uh, I'd say the ER probably would have admitted it was in, of course, the second cup there. He's 11. Uh, so it's not a group, but they get old for that. 
of the next massive jump. Yeah, exactly. exactly. somewhere between three and five for a skilled uh, swing program. Mm -hmm. um, if, we're, if we're getting above that, then we're successfully getting patients from outside the community. What we've seen is a, is a little bit of a mix. Uh, we've seen probably two-thirds of our, would you all say about two-thirds of our patients are, or, or three-fourths maybe are from this area. Mm -hmm. And we're also getting a, a couple referrals from outside hospitals. Actually, one of these parents would go, go back to Mr. Tallinn. Thank you so much for sending the patient back this way. But um, if we're really doing a great job, I think we'll have eight to ten. But that's not all going to be from this area. Uh, as we put which tall referrals, maybe some private goals and from outside this area, things like that. And you guys are continuing to kind of culture those uh, relationships beginning with you? Yes. Our skilled intermediate since this days, um, we are at 103 in 2017, and we grew up to 682 in 2018, so we have about a 500% growth there. Our PT, our treatments and evaluations, went from uh, 3,002 in 2017 to 3,978 in 18. So that grew about 33% there. Our occupational therapy was at 231 in 2017, and we ended the year with 342. So about a 48% increase in that area. Um, on radiology, our total radiology um, was at 1,399 in 2017. It was pretty consistent. We had a 2% decrease, and we ended with 1,373. Our laboratory, the total testing, uh, we were at 30,172 in 17, and we ended with 32,511, so an 8% growth there. Our emergency department patients, we were at 627 in 17, and uh, we ended with 546. So uh, about a 13% decrease there. And Is that just people that are coming into the emergency room? Yeah, yeah, I think that's part of it. Yeah, yeah. That, that one's not as, well, we did open it yet. Yeah, we, the FQHC did open a clinic. So we haven't done an analysis on this to see the severity of you know, the case mix index, whether that increase or decrease in the, in the ER. But, uh, we presume maybe some of that's from a, a 
from some of the patients being seen in the, in the clinic. They're currently seeing 10 to 15 patients a week right now. Um, when you see that our acute care uh, actually didn't change much at all, uh, but our ER went down, that kind of supports it as well. That maybe that decrease was from some of the non emergent patients getting care in the clinic because the more severe patients are going to be more likely to get admitted. So if the emissions don't change much, then the same severity is probably going to be good. Uh, uh, health, health is it we were at 605 and 70, and we were down to 436 and 18, so about a 28% decrease there. And that's mostly um, we kind of get in on the home health and how we see those patients in the short term. So we have the right one. We expected that decrease there. Any other questions on that? Okay. So then I'll move to the download sheet. So at 1231-18, our total current assets uh, were at 2,800,000. Last year, uh, we ended the year at 2,073,000. So we had a $726,000 increase there. And you'll see that a lot of that is in the first line, which is cash. Um, our cash increased about $1.3 million. And most of that is we were we received about $924,000 um, and another $499,000 in June 2018, which was for our 2017 cost report money. And then they kind of looked at 2018 and kind of said, okay, this is how much we have used so far in 2018. So that was about $1.4 million. And um, just with our stats and you know, everything, we were able to um, maintain that money in the bank. And we've been able to live kind of make it on just by just coming in. So we're going to keep most of that. So that's probably most of it. Um, a lot of that money, though, right now we have to have put it back because we don't know yet how to ask for the teens' cost of what's going to so we put about a million back just as we serve the case. Uh, we're hoping that we don't need that, but uh, just in case we have to pay back. Um, uh, that increase was kind of offset from the estimated third party receivables um, that decreased 923000 And that was because in the balances for 1231 that was what our receivable was on that cost report, and we have not booked that yet, so that's why you're seeing that. Uh, that so, about April, um, we'll have the cost report numbers for 2018, and at that point, we'll come back in and um, book the receivable or the bid or whatever, wherever we end up at. Um, our net property plate and equipment uh, came in at seven or 679000 for 2018. We were at 573000 in the prior year, so we had a $106,000 increase there. And uh, you kind of see that um, our total fixed assets went up 208000 And with the increase in cash and the capital seats, we were actually able to invest in some uh, new assets this year, so that's why you're seeing that. And, um, so some of the things that we did during the year is we have we repaired the real home that um, home health building, we purchased a coffee cell, we um, purchased an ice stack machine, um, we have to uh, repair or fix the um, chiller in the building. We purchased a van to transport patients, and we also purchased a hematology um, panel. So that's kind of the, what we were able to. Um, bringing our total assets to three million four hundred eighty thousand, and last year we were at two million uh, six hundred forty-six thousand. Okay. I'll move over to the next one. Well, our total current liabilities at for uh, came in at five million nine hundred eighty-five thousand. Last year we were at three million seven hundred and thirty-nine thousand. We had a $2,245,000 increase there. 
Um, most of that is setting up the accounts payable. Um, we have a two million three hundred and thirty nine thousand increase there. And uh, at uh, twelve thirty one two thousand eighteen, our accounts payable balance is at five million nine hundred and fourteen thousand. And when we break that down, um, the amount that is owed to CPC Stafford is five million seven hundred and seventy one thousand. And the remaining is uh, $143,000. And that's kind of a non CPC. And uh, on the aging, you'll see that we're pretty current with all the AAPs. So that's just kind of them that we've been noticing over the last um, maybe um, five months or whatever. That we're staying really current. It fluctuates a little bit just on timing, but most of it. Uh, our total long term liabilities are two million and sixty three thousand. And last year we were at one million nine hundred and seventy seven thousand, which is an eighty six thousand dollar increase. And most of that is up in the long term portion of the capital leases. And so on two of those fixed assets that I had gone over on the other page. Uh, we actually um, took out uh, capital leases on those, and that was on the um, home sale and on the college and the other ones. So that's why you see that debt uh, On the lot of long term, that's one for one million three hundred sixty four thousand. Mm -hmm. What what is that? Um, so that's going to be our. Uh, like the capers liability that we've gone over before. So the reason why you're not seeing a change right now is when the auditors come in, they'll get an actuarial report on the capers plan, and then at that time during the audit, they will adjust it based on what the actuarial report says. Okay, any questions on that? Okay. On the next page, I'll kind of on the left hand side, kind of tells you for the current month of December and how the numbers out and then on the right side is trying to year to date. So I'll cover more the year to date during the end of the year. Our total patient service revenue uh, for 2018 came in at $3,629,000. Last year we um, ended the year at $2,985,000. So we had a uh, $673,000 increase in our gross um, patient revenue which is kind of supports the stats that I had gone over on this page. Our total deductions were at $2,995,000. Last year we were at $2,437,000. Bringing our net patient service revenue in 2018 to $6,625,000. And last year we were at $5,392,000. So uh, $1.2 million uh, increase in our net patient revenue. Year on the next page, the first three lines is our other uh, operating revenue. And um, for 2018, that came in at $521,000. And last year, we were at $497,000. So we have a $23,000 increase there. And um, on down a little bit, you'll see our total operating expenses um, at twelve forty one thousand eighteen came in at eight million six hundred and fifty one thousand and last year at seven million seven hundred and thirty three thousand. So a nine hundred and eighteen thousand dollar increase year over year. And a lot of that is just in you know, like salary and wages, employee benefits, contract services, and purchase services, so almost like a labor cost is really seeing that increase. And if you added up all those there was a $741,000 increase in those areas. And uh, there's several reasons for that. Uh, one of the ones is increase in revenue, increase in patients, you need more staff to be able to handle those patients. And uh, so that's um, a lot of it. And then also for partial year in 2017, the employees were on the hospital side, and now we've moved them over to be able to go that side. So that increase the cost just a little bit comparing uh, some of the Our non operating um, uh, revenue, 
revenue was at six thousand, and in 2017 we're at twenty-five thousand. Bringing our um, total net loss for 2018 to one million four hundred and ninety-eight thousand, and last year we were at one million eight hundred and seventeen thousand. So we're about three hundred and nineteen thousand dollars better than we were last year. Um, but of course, the cost report has not, uh, that estimate has not been put in. So if there was a point of all that, I could take up some of that portion. But if there's a receivable, then I'd be better. I did, um, can I start on the prices? I don't know if I started on the road. But those areas where um, that, you, that we were kind of monitoring, which is like supplies, rent expense, Telephone utilities, maintenance, and minor equipment. You add those all up, that ended up at 698000 So we were above. Last year, 
uh, laboratory testing, um, we had 200, uh, 2,793,000, ,000, which is up about 34% from last month and up about 4% from where we were in January 2018. Uh, emergency patients, we had 31, which was about 34% down from last month and 49% down from where we were in January 2018. And then our home health visits, we had 53, which is about 29% higher than where we were in last month, and 8% higher than we were in uh, January of 2018. So I think that we stayed pretty, uh, kind of increased from last month where we were, but down in some of, of the areas compared to January 2018. But February was uh, our stats were up, and currently um, our stats in March. We have um, seven patients in right now, and one of those is acute. We have four skilled to bed and two um, intermediate so patients in right now. So I think that uh, March will end up being uh, back up in that one. Um, That's the definition of difference between intermediate and sense and sentence. Intermediate so. so so technically, all the bed is swing, swing from status to status. So there's within a swing bed, meaning you don't have to go to a different area of the hospital to change status. You go from observation, you could be acute care, skilled care, or intermediate care. Uh, the difference between skilled care, you understand that, uh, and intermediate care is intermediate care is more long term care. Um, a lot of states don't even know that exists, but it's a federal, we didn't even know it existed until we came to Kansas because um, Great Plains Health Alliance hospitals tend to use this a lot. Um, but uh, it's basically a long-term care. So we don't really, we're not really looking to increase those numbers too much because we don't want to compete with local nursing homes. But there's a, a, a couple patients that, that express that they wanted to they prefer to stay at our facility, and so they requested that. We talked to them in the nursing home. They didn't really want to go to our hospital, so we you know, turned them turned them away. And so that's why they're there. Basically, they either either pay private, or uh, some people might have a long term care insurance. We don't have any of those, uh, or Medicaid will pay for long term care, uh, and uh, and so we just charge them the age between the, uh, the effect on that, uh, it's really, it's not really much of a profit for the hospital because at the end of the year when the, the uh, government does the cost reports, they'll go back and dock us the Medicaid rate for those beds. So if we're charging the Medicaid rate, we get to collect the Medicaid rate and the, the CMS takes that Medicaid rate back from us. And so it's a wash. If we have a few labs or PD or something like that, we might just So um, for January of 2019, our total current assets were at 3217000 In January of 2018, we were at $2,530,000, so we had $686,000 increase there, um, which a lot of these explanations are pretty similar to the same explanations that we had in the December one. So we are we see most of that sitting in the cash area, so we still the cash is, is uh, was up from last year. And then um, that estimated third party receivable is still something and then the 2030 is still there since we haven't reported that in 2019. Uh, our uh, net property plant equipment came in at 670000 um, and in January of 18, we were at 565000 so $104,000 um, increase there. And so you'll see that same $208,000 increase, which is the same, uh, same representation as the other one, just the additional appointment that we had just in 2018. Bring our total assets um, for 2019 at $3,887,000. On the next page, you'll see that our total current liabilities at January 31st, 2019, 
is at six million six hundred and ten thousand. And we were at four million three hundred and eleven last year, so two million two hundred and ninety eight thousand dollar increase there. And when we break down that accounts payable number, at January thirty first, twenty nineteen, our um, accounts payable was at six million one hundred and two thousand and five million nine hundred and seventy three thousand was what's due to CBC staff. And the rating is 129,000. That's not other than loan system. Um, our long-term liabilities came in at 2 million 44,000, compared to 1 million 962,000 per year. And then creating an 81,000 dollars difference. And this is the same thing. You've seen 135,000 on our long-term capital leases. We have a couple of that we took out in 2013. But we have to have that. It wasn't even on On the next page, you'll see that our total patient service revenue for the for January came in at 404000 uh, last January, we were at 305000 so we had a $99,000 increase there. Um, so, like, our stats were down a lot when I kind of went from January to January, but on the patients that we had, that our acuity was a lot higher on those patients, so we actually were able to, uh, to see higher uh, total patient revenue on the patients that we did see, even though it was down. Our uh, Undertaking into account the total deductions of net patient service revenue for the month came in at 409000 compared to 476000 in the year before, um, creating a $66,000 decrease. And that decrease is just kind of in those contractuals. Uh, we, had, we had one large write off that we had to write off um, that kind of create, that affected those uh, contractuals. On the next page, you'll see that our um, other operating revenue came in at $43,000. We were at $41,000 last January, so $2,000 increase there. Our total operating expenses came in at $672,000. And you know, last year, we were at $627,000, so we had a $45,000 increase in uh, the total expenses year over year there. Uh, bringing for the month our total uh, net loss of 218000 for 2019, and you're at $180,000 loss in 2019. I think I started those areas too, but I don't know if you want to continue and be interested in kind of where those are at. But if you added up um, those different categories, um, for a month of January, we're at 67000 on your uh, contracted services, is that just the uh, on the leases? Why did it, that, that look like it jumped up about a hundred thousand? Yeah, so that one is going to be it um, right now. When I when I look back at it, so these December numbers, we're still doing a few tweaking for the auditors. So, like, I'm actually in this week, I uh, did some tweaking. And that's really a timing of when the payroll hit, or kind of when our, what's it, when our contracted invoices hit. And there's another invoice that needs to be moved out of January and back into December. So, that's just kind of the timing of when this hit. So, I'm going to back out like a certain time. Uh, the invoices and move it back into the right here. I've done that, but that's not the question. But yeah, that is on all the contractors at the hospital. So right. And then the purchase services is uh, mostly of that is like a management fee. So you'll see that it went down because mid year in 2018, we did do a start of our recovery evaluator on our summer signs and we're doing start management fee down. So you'll have been we are expecting those for the first six months that you'll see in the
they do have auditors that are coming in two weeks. And the 18th, 17th, mm -hmm. the 18th, they're coming, they'll be out all week doing the audit, and then shortly after that, they'll start the cost report and stuff. And so we should remember trying to keep it. Um, uh, and of course, in June, before um, the issue goes out, we just get to it for that part. And the board and the board will be beginning to get those final numbers. We did have a hospital survey, uh, a routine survey. Uh, they were running behind the state campus in the past, so they, they got uh, some contracts from out of state. Uh, they had some bindings, but there were no immediate jeopardy issues or other concerns like that. They wanted us to work on their input, which is relatively new to our emergency preparedness plan, which is something we'll have to put into the county and you know, mass disasters and things like that. How like, the hospital equipped to handle those and how is the relationship between the hospital and the other county emergency services and coordinating uh, for uh, emergency preparedness. So that's kind of the main thing that we are uh, needing to create. We even have a formal policy that works some guidelines on how to approach it. We've got to make um, Just kind of recapping, so this first time we've been talking about year end. Uh, things we like, things we don't like, um, like the patient growth that we're seeing. It's not off the charts, but we're, uh, you know, over the, you know, since we've been here in 2016, we've steadily seen most areas of the hospital grow. And we like that. We want to see that trend continue as much as feasible. Um, we're seeing a wider range of patient acuity. So there's some patients that we weren't seeing before that we are seeing now. Um, uh, and that, uh, as long as we keep seeing more acute patients, the staff is more comfortable seeing those type of patients and we're more likely to give those patients those transfers in from outside communities and we're less likely to need to transfer patients out that come into our emergency department with those type of illnesses. So right now we're taking good care of those patients uh, and we want to continue that and grow, uh, grow on that. Uh, although we didn't start the clinic, we're having to be kind of a partner with the FQHC and, uh, and, uh, and starting that clinic. We've, the, the hospital was leasing that space to them and also letting one of the providers do it there at a, uh, a real a great deal for the FPHC that, that allowed them to start up so that they get some more options and uh, keep the patients here in the, in the county. Um, I love our, our increase in the day's cash on hand. Um, when we came on, it was a few tens of thousands of dollars or something. But something, yeah, it was like a half day cash on hand, and now we've got. We're in a really good position. Even if we had a million dollar hit on our cost report that we had to pay back, we've still got enough cash on hand left over to keep us in a good position in the hospital. So, um, you know, I think we talked before, these hospitals, they get in a tough position. They don't have cash on hand. Their census drops off a little bit, like you guys did. When we, we came on initially. We had eight weeks of no patients, and that can shut a hospital down really quick. Um, uh, the non cash assets. I like that. You know, usually, when almost every time we look at a hospital, you just see they built the hospital this year, and every year after that, the, the, it just appreciates, with, and, and they don't put anything back into it. So I like to see that we're reversing that trend and, and keeping up with the property and the equipment. Uh, I like that. Um, the, the biggest issue we have right now is the growing AP. Um, that's what we don't like. We can't grow that AP, whether it's for us or anybody else, perpetually. At some point, you know, we have to start writing that off as medication to be writing that off. So we're trying to uh, build like that and, and hopefully over time start reversing that trend. Uh, one of the things we've talked about with the board and, and something we're probably going to be on this month is we're starting to move the, the providers over to the, the hospital's employment and, con and those that are contracted with our company. We're going to move that contract over to the hospital. We've already, already started that process with uh, the Julie, so sort of three stages. Well, medicine company we want to start having all of our healing providers as well. Um, that, that will save probably in excess of $600,000 a year of, of billing. So, for instance, if we had done that last year, we would see uh, uh, the financial uh, reports would be $600,000 better than they currently are. So that's one area that we're looking to try to reduce some of our costs and, and, uh, and get those people back to the hospital. Um, Another thing we want to do is, is there's currently, we have, we have probably five or six uh, staff positions at the hospital that no one that lives at now the staff at the hospital, so we're looking to recruit a physician. We were successful, oddly enough, 
Hamilton, but uh, Wichita should be a little easier to closer to the power. And here we should be a little easier closer to closer to Wichita, but we haven't got a position yet. Uh, we do have interest in, uh, in, in three to five different candidates for PA and their practitioner positions to kind of go on to help me out some too. So that's good. Um, did I say no paper? Oh, no. Um, uh, one thing, uh, there's been the topic of the, of the Senate bill uh, proposal, uh, 380. Uh, we haven't got a position on the, from the board yet, but we just kind of wanted to voice our position on that. Uh, not, not that we have a voice in it, but um, uh, we don't see any issue at all. In fact, we support that Senate bill. Um, as we understand it, we listen to your, your testimony at the legislature. And I haven't read the bill, but as, as was outlined by the, the folks at the legislature and yourself, um, I think uh, getting more clarity to separate the business of the, the, the liability of the business of the hospital from, from the municipalities that, that own that, that land uh, is, is important. I know where we come from in Oklahoma, that's very clear here it's not, and so we support uh, that, that delineation. Um, if it doesn't pass, I just wanted to kind of reassure you guys on what the liability is of the hospital. I think there's some misperceptions. Uh, when we came on, it was just over two hundred thousand dollars of AP. That if if a hospital closes, would the county possibly be responsible for that? If they are, then it would have been two hundred thousand. Currently, it's what one twenty nine. One hundred, yeah. So it's currently one hundred twenty nine thousand. Any of the amount that is from us is, is not subject to uh, any exposure. That's 118. I said 318. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. 118. My memory. Any other questions at all? So you're thinking about getting another PA? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, we have other PAs, we have uh, and physicians that, that come down. Of course, when you have someone that's not employed or contracted full time with you, then you, the hospital ends up paying more, or we end up paying more, depending on. We charge the hospital the same thing, process more money. So when we move the contracts to the hospital, it's costing them more money. Um, our goal is to reduce that, and uh, when we can get someone to commit more long term, we can get them at a lower rate than what we're currently paying. For our PRN, so so we've uh, we've uh, we had some interest. We put an offer out there. We had quite a bit of interest in graduating PAs. Uh, that uh, one of them we're super interested in. That has a, uh, a history in the military and uh, uh, and uh, EMS services and graduated from high school. So we're talking to him and some others. And he has a background in EMS and that's very helpful here. And, we're looking for some, some others that, that have that leadership and, and uh, experience. Because we don't have a lot of volume here, but we'll see everything. We'll see everything that a big hospital can have. Uh, we may not treat it definitively there, but we may have to ship it out if it's you know, surgery or, or ICU, et cetera. But, but it'll come here too, it's just in a lower volume. So whoever's here, they keep here. I noticed that Dr. Moser, who used to be at a Tribune, who did, um, I don't know how many years out there, uh, then took a position with KDHA for four or five years. Then he went up to the Med Center as a dean of something. Well, now he's been, he's taken a job in Salina. And this is uh, for rural physicians. He started up a new program, I guess. Uh, to this, grants and whatnot to yeah. support. I know that Kansas does have some grant programs. Uh, uh, they're not as I mean, uh, Oklahoma got so desperate that they 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 were. For a four-year commitment to a rural, uh, rural location, they were paying $160,000 of student loans off tax-free. So, uh, 
So uh, I know there's several different programs that are either national or campus based that are available for the next part of the year. So um, hopefully we can get a little more. Because that, that really boy, that'll get someone out to the rural community who say, hey, we're pretty much back to school. I do have a question for you. Like when you guys fly out, have somebody flown out of uh, Stafford, is that usually Eagle Med out of Rich Cone? They've changed their name. It used to be Eagle Med, but it's Eagle Med. That was the one out of Hutch, because Life Team has, you know, and they have moved theirs from Hutch. I can't call it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's the same as. Eagle Med it was, but they've changed the name. Yeah. I'd have to check for sure. I, I, I know the colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, but I always forget. But the, the Life Team, they had a helicopter based at Hutch, and I think mm -hmm. just they did all that. And they've just pulled yeah. that in the last month, so all of our copters will have to come out of so whether you fly into Hutch or Wichita, it's a different company, or is it one? Thing? No, it's it's it, it doesn't matter where you're sending them to. If they're going to go by helicopter, they're going to fly it's pretty much the same. It's 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 whoever can get to us the soonest. So the closest base is where we're going to use them, regardless of where we send them from there. Um, it, yeah. So some people's insurance doesn't cover that, right? And then they're talking about supplemental insurances. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the rounds only cover this or that, you know, because I mean, I think the flight from Great Bend to Wichita is like 42,000. Well, then, now most. What's the insurance it covers if you're going to. Yeah, most of, and we should probably jump in when we get back with the, the commissioners, um, uh, to spread, at least spread the word. Uh, all the companies I know of, they generally, when they kind of service an area, they'll have a really nominal price, uh, uh, like less than 100 bucks a year for your whole family. Mm -hmm. and, and, if you pay that and you have to utilize their services, uh, then, then uh, it's free. Well, not free, but they, they will pick up all the deductions. Uh, in fact, we've had issues where there's no reason to send someone by helicopter, and we've had to argue with the, uh, with the patient saying, hey, this is ambulance. And they say, no, no, it's, you know, it's free if we get the helicopter. And I've, I've actually called some of the companies and said, hey, here's the situation where you go ahead and take the patient. But, oh, yeah, no problem. And, and so for a, for like 60 bucks or 80 bucks, they, they did a $20,000 fly for a patient. You know, or, yeah. But there is an insurance that came. Mm -hmm. Talk to the yeah, but the, but the flight service itself offers a, a lot of a lot of the flight services themselves offer it, and sometimes the flight services will will get into a conglomerate or, or some some more package deal that will cover several of the different flight services. I'm not sure if what you're talking that's about is that same one. Yeah, but but that, that's that's usually good. It will cost a little bit more, but then it covers all the different flight services. You know, I, what I haven't seen, I'm sure it exists out there, but it'd be really neat if we could see some sort of a, a similar thing with like county EMS services as well, where people say, hey, let's go ahead and pay into that. The county EMS service could continue to bill off insurance, like normal, and get paid from the insurance company, but if there's a subscriber to this plan, and there, I don't see any reason that couldn't be done. And that's a, you know, it, so if people subscribe to each of the plan, I mean, altogether it should be less than $100 a, a year. Uh, and, and yeah, so that's just something that kind of, and I would be happy to help coordinate that with the county. And maybe maybe start by looking at what what the, the plans that are offered by the flight services look like, and then see if, if it's possible to reconstruct something like that for the county and the services, and then you all get off the that to do it too, and, and that would help alleviate. Thank you. Thank you. Hope yep. son knows all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think he's fine. I think he's fine. I just, I felt a little stupid right on it. Uh, no, I worked Dodge City tonight, but, uh, but I wasn't on duty. Yeah, I, we just woke up. I was getting ready to come this way. Yeah, we need to find one for her spot. I took that doctor hat off. I'll be that parent. We'll see you all. If you can shoot me the new one. Okay. And I can have them start. Well, we pause and start looking for some ideas. Okay. 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 Perfect. Thanks. 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 Thanks.